Welcome to another edition of Preps Plus Extra, the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel's online high school sports show where every week we'll talk about some of the top issues of the day, take a look at some of the top events and games you might want to keep your eye out on for the upcoming weekend. Uh, joining me this week is a very special guest, Steve Teets, sports reporter of Now Newspapers and the Menominee Falls Hall of Famer. How you doing, Steve? I am great today, Mark. How are you? I'm doing pretty well. I'm doing pretty well. Good to have you. Um, speaking of uh, speaking of the falls, they have a pretty good player out there. I can't remember his name. No, no, I'm just uh, kidding. <laughs> maybe JP. I think. Yes. Uh, I'm not sure. I can't remember from day to day. Yes, yes. I think we've heard of, <laughs> we've heard of, heard of the young man. Just a little bit. Um, this is uh, we're deep into the season. The tournament has started. Um, Menominee Falls uh, plays uh, uh, Waukesha West. They host them Friday night. Um, but as JP, you know, deep in his senior year, you've seen a lot of falls. You've seen him play a lot. Uh, the game's all about improving. Where have you seen his game grow? Uh, it was very interesting in that I talked to Coach Leffel the other day about that 48-point game of his. And uh, what they really talked about was that in previous games, JP was settling a little bit too much for jump shots, wasn't quite as active. So they just sort of had him, uh, they, 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 they set him up in the post for a time. And then they just encouraged him to slash to the basket and get to the and get to the rim. Uh, when when Catholic Memorial uh, jammed in the defense a little bit, he went out and hit a couple threes, and then that opened up the lane again, and he went back inside again, and it was the perfect storm. Um, I think if he keeps developing that game, he will have a major career down there at North Carolina. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And speaking of the Catholic Memorial game, I think he flirted with a. Uh with a triple double there. I think he had 16, maybe 16 and points, 13 nine, and, nine assists. and nine assists, which is the area that I was, I was impressed with him and how he, he saw the, he was able to see the floor and, you know, really wasn't always, at least in the games I, I've seen him play, he wasn't always looking for his, his offense, which, or lo looking to score rather. Uh, he was also willing to get his teammates involved. Um, but speaking of, you know, Menominee Falls uh, in their tournament chances, you got Germantown in the bottom half of that bracket. But on the other end of that bracket, you got Homestead, a team that's really made some nice improvements here in the last, uh, you know, last year or two under Coach Marcus Hines. Um, again, that's another team you get a chance to, uh, to see very, uh, very often during the season. What's been kind of the key to this, uh, this rejuvenation of the Highlander program? Uh, Coach Hines, you know, they've, been, they've had a nice little influx of talent. Uh, only one senior is really playing any real role on there. The future is all ahead of this team. Um, and, and Heinz gets their attention. They laid an egg a couple weeks ago against Whitefish Bay, a terrible, terrible game that took them out of the uh, conference title race. But then a week later, they played an absolutely terrific game against Germantown and, and gave the Warhawks their closest game all year, an eight-point decision. It never got to within three uh, possessions in the, in the fourth quarter, but because Homestead was able to get physical with Germantown, they were willing to attack the basket, and they hit their threes, uh, they made Germantown work a heck of a lot harder than it probably thought it had to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Homestead is one of those programs that I always thought when Marcus took the job out there, you know, I kind of thought of it as a, as a sleeping giant. I mean, Homestead is, you know, what aren't they good at? You know, they, they got good programs up and down the line, and I figured it would be only a matter of time before uh, the boys' basketball program followed suit. Uh, and, yeah, and, but, and, and, for, and from Marcus's standpoint, this is probably a year or so ahead of schedule, you know, to get this close to 20, to flirt with 20 wins, and to have a possible uh, third uh, shot at Germantown in the sectional. I'm sure he would love that opportunity. Right, right. So let's switch from a sleeping giant in the North Shore to a current king, or maybe we should say queen, of, of the North Shore. Uh, Nicolay, uh, Nicolay's girls basketball team, uh, they are closing in on another conference title, although they'll probably share it with Grafton uh, and Whitefish Bay. They have to win later, later on in the week. Um, but, you know, things aren't, uh, the, the Knights have struggled a little bit lately. I think they've lost three of their last four games. Um, again, what's, what's going on with the Knights and can they turn this uh, thing around uh, heading into the tournament? I think with the real, what's really showing up is their lack of, a real lack of height. Teams are packing it in, uh, try, trying to deny Brittany Fair and Courtney Smith the lane. And 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 the other the opponents are just crashing the boards on them, making it really really difficult to get second chances. This was a 
this this Nicolay team was an amazing story at the beginning of the year with the huge comeback victories against DSHA and Pius. Uh, but um, I think things are just catching up a little bit with them. Um, they do not go tremendously deep, and they rely on that Brianna Gregg, but she's a little undersized at 5'9", compared to some of the other posts that she's going up against. It's a they'll they'll probably win tomorrow night, get that conference title, but I'm just not sure how far they'll be able to go in that tournament. That sectional is just very, very, very deep with Arrowhead and Hamilton and Menominee Falls. Yeah, yeah, that that's a that's a very quality sectional. Uh, in fact, um, in part because of Nicolay's uh, struggles late in the year, Arrowhead got the number one seat in that sectional, uh, and they're closing in on the Classic Eight uh, title. Well, that's all for now. I'd like to thank Steve Teach for joining us this week. Anytime you'd like to stop by Hall of Famer, uh, we'd gladly have you. Uh, I'd be happy to join you. Thank you, Mark. For more Preps Plus action, you can watch me and Lance Allen every Sunday night on today's TMJ4 at 11 p.m. Till next time, I'm Mark Stewart. Take care.